The stars of stores have left for Pittsburgh, and they're going to win the TBT. You're locked on UConn. You are locked on UConn, your daily podcast on the UConn Huskies, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On UConn your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube as part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. A little housekeeping for me. My YouTube support has been utterly amazing. I'd love to have all my subscribers also download the audio version. Equally as important to subscribing to the YouTube channel. Helps our audience grow. So if you can do me two quick favors, first click that little button on the bottom of your screen. Click. Then head over to Apple, Spotify, simple as this, right? You get to your phone, you go over where you get your podcasts, click the follow button. That way you'll never miss a moment of Locked On UConn. And with some new announcements today, you're definitely not going to want to. I can't tell you how much your support means to me. It's everything. If you're tuning in from your car, once you finish the show, please drop us a five-star review. Remember, I don't want you using this while you drive, right? So give us that five-star review after you're done. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. As the playoffs wind down, the sports stop sporting like we want them to. But this summer, FanDuel is hooking all of our customers up with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. So the TBT, for those of you who do not know, it is the basketball tournament. It's in its 10th year in in inception. It started in 2014. Um, There was a moment in time where it meant it was particularly a lot of overseas players. There were um, teams from teams from larger schools. Then it's kind of become a larger event, right? There's a million dollar prize at the end as 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 a at, at the inception of the first tournament, I believe, or maybe the second one. Zell got involved and you could legitimately pick um, a team to win it all. And you also would get some of the prize money, which was kind of wild. I did not win any prize money. I forget the team I chose that year. But the funny part about all that is this is pre sports betting uh, being such a big uh, part, at least from a legal perspective with FanDuel and other folks, that, you know, folks that sponsor our show. So um, the stars of stores, we finally have a UConn team in the TBT. So I'm super excited. There were about 200 fans that gathered at Brian McMahon Gymnasium in Norwalk, Connecticut for an open practice practice from the videos, from the vibes I've heard from everybody. Um, our, our main sponsor from the Feel Good Lab, Ryan Gresh, was there. I know he's done some promotional stuff for the team, some care packages. The atmosphere was electric. Fans essentially dressed as if they were in their UConn best going to Gamble. Uh, the players had a scrimmage, and the rhythm of, of everything from music was echoing through the gym. Post-practice, uh, I, I took some, I don't have any clips, but took some quotes from famous UConn folks who were on this team. First, Jerome Dyson, um, his quote, we all know each other, and I think that will be one of our advantages. And I, I totally agree with him. Some of these teams are kind of put together. I know some of this is, uh, cross, I don't want to say dimensional, but some cro- cross a different season, you know, from 2014, 2009, et cetera, 2011. But that's a big thing. This is also a quote from Drone Dyson. I have played in this before on a couple different teams, which he has. And it's always that cohesiveness that is cohesiveness that is missing. So I think we'll have a good, uh, good, good goal to represent our university and, and what we have done at the college level and as pros. So couldn't, agree with Jerome more. Um, I think that's also a big part of it is they're, they're playing for this UConn and all of those chips that have been won in the past. Some of the folks on this team are national champions, multi-time national champions. Some have fallen short, but this is a great way for them to come back and not necessarily wear their UConn Jersey, but represent UConn. Um, UConn is the number one seed. As the stars of stores, they'll face eight seed Herkimer Originals in the opening game of the tournament this Saturday at 6 p.m. at Peterson's Event Center. The stakes are are pretty high, guys. You know what I mean? Like, this is a $1 million grand prize tournament that's spread through, I think, what, 10, 10 12 people. So it's not like they're each going to get a million dollars, but 
it's a you know it's 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 a tournament that if you're playing overseas and it's a way to come back and get the competitive juices flowing um get some get some eyeballs on you maybe some of these guys have some more aspirations to play at some different um places around the country you know maybe the the g league comes calling those are some some precious spots and it's you know it's a 64 team tournament culminating in the championship game on august 4th in philly which will be broadcast on fox you get some national exposure as well as we've talked about the team features jerome dyson ryan boatwright deandre daniels joey calcaterra and jeff adrian is coached by the huskies all-time leading scorer also a guest on this show uh, a few months back chris smith Jeff Adrian is probably my one of my favorite players of all time. He was interviewed after practice saying, I'm feeling the vibe and the good energy. We're getting familiar with each other and building some good chemistry. It's a wonderful feeling being, being out there. And everyone has echoed that sentiment. And it looked good. I mean, some of the, the highlights, the clips that were sent to me that I saw online, it looks like everyone's flowing. And I think Jeff Adrian surprised some folks with his range. Um, for everybody that doesn't know, like when you when you play on a team and you're a big physical bruiser, coaches don't want you playing 25 feet from the basket. They want you to, to bang down low and get rebounds and play physical. Jeff Adrian can shoot and it may not be his forte, but hopefully he shows that in a, a tournament like this. So many of the players are coming off professional seasons in Europe. Uh, while others hadn't been on a team for some time. Uh, but the translation, the transition seems pretty seamless. Uh, Chris Smith was talked about how it's going really smooth. He didn't really know how these guys were going to come in. Some of them are playing in Europe and have had some nag nagging injuries, but they all came in here in shape and we were surprised. We thought we ha might have to go at a slow pace, but these guys are ready to play and they're excited about the TBT in the first year of Stars of Stores. Um, I'm excited about it too. I, I had Mark D'Amelia on uh, July 15th, so that's a few days ago. Uh, we're going to try to get some guys on, you know, maybe after games to get some interviews for them just to kind of get their impression. I, I have a feeling this team's going to make a long run. So uh, hopefully over the next few weeks, we can get some of the guys on the team on. Maybe Tyler Olander, who's a coach, you know, Coach Smith. Um, we've had Mark D'Amelia on. We can, or D'Amelio, we can do, um, you know, we've asked for potentially Ryan Boatwright uh, to come on. I'd love to see uh, the boat show on and, and talk about his time at UConn, but also really just focus on. Stars of Stores. This is a, a big thing for these guys and to kind of relive their glory. Um, talking about Mark, uh, the quotes from the team, Mark is the man. He has had these guys staying in nice hotels, riding in nice cars and coach buses. And these guys really appreciate that because these guys are pros and they played overseas or in the NBA Summer League. So they're used to a little bit of, of the good life. So it's it's been first class all the way. And I think that's the way you do this. If you don't have the means to do it, then don't put it together because these guys aren't going to try and you know, if they feel like they're not being uh, taken care of, and they clearly are. So, so they they also got a chance to go back to Gamble in, in practice, which Jeff Adrian, I saw some of the pictures. I mean, you could tell he was emotional, kind of taking it all in, and he was quoted as saying yesterday was a special day. Being up at UConn, seeing the banners and Coach Hurley, being back on campus, I hadn't been there in years. It was such a great day. That's another thing. I got to thank coach Hurley and coach Kamani Young for going out there and really having your presence on the team. They think they got a sweatshirt that they can rock. Um, I, 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 I'm super excited for this team and I, I'm pumped about the UConn men, uh, you know, the, the organization, if you will, that's behind them. Um, I think it's, it's such a, such a, such a cool thing to give back to the players that have created the culture of UConn from the start and um i wish this had been going on for a, a much longer time so kudos to to mark d'amelio and his his organization for getting this uh squared away the stars of stores hope more special days are ahead and perhaps even that million dollar payday so i'm gonna be on this all the way the, i think mark d'amelio put a, a a a link in the chat I'm also going to post that on my Twitter to kind of show people where they can find the first game. The first game is not televised. It's on a link on the TBT website. So I'll have that out for you guys. Um, but before we do that, let's shift back to our current team and one of our future stars in Jalen's store and our current team coming up after this. I love sports. I love them so much. I never want them to stop. But as the playoffs wind down, when we get fewer games and the sports aren't sporting like we want them to, 
FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. All I have to do is open the app and dream up bets anytime I'm in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. So head over to FanDuel.com. That's right. There's head over to FanDuel.com and start making the most of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. All right, we're back on Locked On UConn. Thanks for jumping on with us today. Um, absolutely love the thought of Jalen Stort being a lottery pick this year. If you went into some of the archives of what his prospects were coming into last season, people had him as a you know a borderline second round pick, um, and really focusing on. Jay Stu, this is what his role was for last season. He was going to come in and help the Huskies, obviously try to repeat as, as a champion. There were some questions about who was going to step up. We didn't know anything about Cam Spencer at the time. He was known for his offensive versatility, which we definitely saw. Good shooter, completely can, can make people have a complete mismatch with his size and length. He's advanced for his age coming in as far as being a dynamic scorer with a capability from anywhere on the floor. We saw that. We saw some incredible athletic moments on the defensive side of the ball, not just offensively. I think that there's that three-level scoring that we didn't need from him this year. He was more of like almost like a spot-up shooter only, and it's someone that got out on the break when he played a multiple minutes, and I think the confidence level for there is going to soar. Um, he's got incredible physical attributes. He's not, I wouldn't call him the fastest guy in the world, but he's got a quick first step and uses his big frame to kind of help with, um, folks that are trying to slap at the ball. And, and, and he's, I, I definitely think that there's one area that I would improve on if I was Jay Stu is his ball handling from the perspective of when you're six, seven, and I'm going to sound like such an old man, but being a tall guy, you know, being able to kind of dribble low to the, low to the ground. Um, you know, guys like Kevin Durant have perfected that guys in the NBA who are six, seven, six, eight have perfected that. So I'm not sitting here saying that he can't do it. I'm saying that he can get the ball knocked out of his hands. Uh, if he dribbles almost like too high to stand up, uh, as a part of his, as part of his bag, as they call it, right. Improve his bag a little bit there. Um, defensively, I think he's got an incredible potential to be one of the best shot blockers on the team. Um, he was a good shot blocker in high school. I think his college effectiveness isn't to be determined anymore. We saw a bunch of it in, in in spot duty this year. Like we talked about, he's a little slower than I probably would like for a wing, but I'll tell you what, man, he makes up for it with his first step. You don't have to be the fastest guy in the world, but if you can get by someone, his length makes him a super underrated finisher. Um, But I think what people are going to really find, find what is interesting about this kid being kind of either inserted into the starting lineup or as the first guy off the bench is I think his defensive prowess is what's going to set him apart from say Liam McNeely or some of the other guys that are vying for playing time, Jaden Ross, et cetera. He's going to be able to score, but I think he's a, sh he's a shutdown defender for his length and his ability to anticipate in his shot blocking ability. Um, there's no, listen, there's no uh, surprise here. He's a former four star. He, when he came in, this year as a freshman, he really showed what he was capable of. Um, he is going to follow in the footsteps of Steph and Donovan Klingon in terms of trying to <clears throat> help repeat or get to a third national championship in a row. Comes from a really strong basketball pedigree. Uh, both his father and his uncles played at the college and pro levels. And I expect Jay Stu to be the number one impact player coming into next season. I think Solo Ball is up there, Ada Mahaney. Like I said, we are so deep, we can go in many different directions. And my mind may change about 47 different times. I will change my mind so much, you will call me, uh, insert politician's name there. Uh, so are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting. Make the switch to Locked On Sports Today, a 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you to bring the biggest stories without all the screaming. Isn't it crazy that Skip Bayless and and uh, that whole debate screaming culture is is kind of coming to an end, at least from the perspective of these guys are on the same show anymore. I don't think we're ever going to be rid of Stephen A. Smith, but uh, I just every time I read this promo, there's it just it reminds me of that. But anyway, 
Today's today's uh, brings you can't miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app as part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team, every day. We'll talk about an upcoming football show, maybe, and the schedule that lays in front of, yes, the UConn football team. For those of you that were super excited about all that goes with UConn football, we will talk about that coming up after this. Well, I hope if you heard that, you didn't think I was going to go into a, you know, 10 or 20 minute uh, segment of the podcast talking about the UConn football team. I'll tell you what is coming down the pike in terms of coverage of Locked On UConn for the football team. I have been in recent conversations with a couple of gentlemen who do a national podcast, who do, who have roots in UConn football who are excited about coming on once a week. The show will come out on a Friday. We will record at some point during the week and then put it out on Friday. Um, The target date for this to start is going to be August 16th. So that gives a full two weeks before the opening season game at Maryland in College Park at 12 o'clock on FS1. For those of you who don't know this, my uncle was on the board of trustees at UConn for at least a decade, and he invited me to that game and said, hey, do you want to go and tailgate, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And I declined because um, my wife is due about two weeks from then, so I will not be in Maryland rooting on UConn football, but I'm rooting for UConn football. I think that you guys who follow this show know that this is more of a basketball show. And like I've said, we're going to break up this show into two parts to give the UConn women the much uh, the, uh, the the love that they deserve. Um, and with only having a maximum of 30, 35 minutes per episode, give or take a few shorter episodes here, and then this is going to be a short one too. Um, I don't think that that's fair to have only a segment on UConn women, only a segment on the UConn men, and only a segment on the football team. So we're going to bring in some experts that are more more of an expert in football, college football in particular, than I am for they're covering it on a regular basis to give you guys your weekly football fix on a football Friday. Uh, I don't know the time that we'll put it out, but it'll be have access to it. And I don't know if it's going to be the lone show of of the fall until we get to the um, basketball season or if it's going to be in addition to. But I wanted to get it on your radar, let you guys know that this is something that is something that I've been trying to get done for a while. At some point, you maybe don't see me on the football show because I feel comfortable letting these two gentlemen just run wild with it. Uh, but initially, I will be on the show hosting and, and asking questions and kind of letting them steer the conversation going so just looking at the schedule it looks like there's some pretty decent games on the schedule obviously play maryland we talked about that um is merrimack a division one program or is that a sub uh, an fcs team i'm not sure that's why i'm not doing the football show they're definitely playing at duke our our good buddies over there in durham um that should be an interesting one florida atlantic like there's a couple teams like I, i'm not sure if they're fcs teams or if they're full-fledged d1 like Florida Atlantic and Buffalo. Let's see what let's while while I have you guys on the show, let's uh let's find that out. Is Buffalo football D1? Uh, team competes in the NCAA Division One level of football. Subdivision and is a member of the mid man. Yep. So Buffalo is so is Buffalo. They play FBS. Wow. Okay. So these are like legit FBS teams, not FCS. Okay, fair enough. Like I said, guys, this is uh, um, I'm being totally transparent. I don't follow a lot of college football. Um, I'm a football fan. Don't get me wrong. So I, I really am hoping that this team can pull me back into that Fiesta Bowl 2000-ish, uh, early 2000s, where you know Randy Etzel took us to the Fiesta Bowl against Oklahoma. Let's go. I'm in. 
let's do it. I'll know. I'll learn the players. I'll get excited about the teams. There's no doubt about it. So, uh, but I will be completely fair that I'm, I have not been a UConn fan from the start in terms of football because it just wasn't that big a deal when I was growing up. And if it is now, because you like the EA Sports 25 that came out and you guys still rock with that, cool. Uh, I'll give you the content you want. It's just not going to be me leading the way. Um, but listen, this is a shorter episode on a Thursday. We're going to have some fun tomorrow with uh, a, a surprise guest. And then also on Monday, we're having a, a guest from Barstool on. So um, some some good stuff coming down the pike. We'd like to have some players on here in the next month or so. Uh, working on trying to get uh, Dan Hurley and, and his his staff squared away and and maybe getting him on the show. That'd be awesome. Um, so anyway, Lockdown has launched the first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Lockdown Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Lockdown, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Lockdown Sports Today now, available on the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. This has been another episode of Lockdown UConn. I'm your host, Mark Zanetto, asking you to stay locked in, stay connected, and make sure your toughness meter is always rising. And as always, go Huskies.